Yeah, what the fuck is good, y'all? It's your boy Bugs back with the Full Circle Podcast. Got my guy Zell in this bitch. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Really. How are you? So we're at a we're at a hotel on Atlantic City. Mm-hmm. Um, undisclosed hotel. Pick whichever one in your mind. They're all the fucking same. <laughs> Cabinets are falling apart. It's it's AC. Yeah, <laughs> like, his bags out front on the ground. That's everywhere though. When I go to the city in Philly too, I'm like, damn, there's just fucking shit everywhere. Mm-hmm. That's how cities are. But um, yeah, I don't but, care about these hotels. It's man. so fucked. But last night we linked here. We pulled an all nighter, recorded an epic fucking song, mm-hmm. and tonight we're going. To perform that shit in Philadelphia at Spit, Spit Philly. so we're Make leaving sure AC. Y'all pop out tonight. Yeah, it's just Make gonna sure. be a vibe. Pop out every time. This uh, yeah. this will probably drop whenever, but we're doing it once a month, so you guys can pop out Ex- whenever. Exactly. But um, yeah, I didn't realize that it was five in the morning when I was getting to my bed last night, and I was like, shit, tomorrow's gonna be a long day. Mm-hmm. And then I woke up, I was like, you know what? We should just do the podcast and talk about it. Exactly, you know I mean? yeah. Like, instead of trying to cram everything into one little, mm-hmm. like... Oh, we're cramming hours. it later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're cramming it well, later. It definitely, but, like, like we, we, we had to get this out the way first, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, while we still waking up with a fresh mind, sober. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, coffee. You get what I'm saying? I don't so. drink coffee <laughs> ever like this. I don't do this. Only time I drink coffee is when I share it with someone. Because mm-hmm. it gets me... I'm already so hyper, but... If you see me drinking a nice coffee, that's how you know that I want to be in my bed. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. I guess I do need, and I put a bunch of sugar in it too. Oh um, man, I love sugar. See, I can't do coffee. See, so like, like, like even last night when I was trying to drink some coffee, because um, being we, stoned with it too is very weird. Because I feel it in my eyes, but I'm energetic. Do that like give you like an adrenaline rush? Like, I don't like it because like, like I like I said, I already have so much energy. Yeah. So like when I drink coffee, it just makes me like. Oh, wait, that's it's cocaine. Coffee so, is cocaine. So when when you smoke and Adderall, like, it's all the same. But I, like when you smoke with coffee, though, does it like re? Like, no, re- it, it, it cancel. Like, they cancel each other out in such a weird way that you only feel it in your head. You're only stoned up here. <laughs> <laughs> like you're only you're only stoned like in your eyes. Yeah, that's, that's how crazy. I feel right now. Like it's not like a uh, like I'm not stoned, which is that's the kind of stoned I like. I like indicas. I like stonies that get me like retarded. Like Thanos, like, yeah, your eyes are red. You've been smoking all morning. <laughs> <laughs> you woke up early as shit. I went to bed at five, and he said he woke up at eight. Yeah, no, yeah, I went to bed like around yeah three thirty four. Woke up like eight, mom, because my body just naturally like wakes up around that time, like morning time. Mm-hmm. Like I always been like that since I was young, and like only sleep past noon if I'm like sick or whatever. I wish. Yeah, it's, it's, I think it's you call it a gift and a curse. <laughs> Cause I get, I've like, always cause been I'm doing, all, I've always it. been doing all nighters type thing. So yeah, and no, I understand. And I do them multiple nights in a row. So I'll like by day three or four, it's always been like that for me. I'll just sleep for like a whole day. Mm-hmm. It's not healthy. Yeah, it's definitely not yeah, good yeah. for my body. The circadian rhythm or whatever it's called. Yeah, no, in, yeah, it, it, it knocks your schedule off. Mm-hmm. Like you, your energy is not the same. Your thought, like it, it, you just don't feel. The same, you don't want to do anything. You know what I'm saying? What's your day? You even yeah, even shit I want to do, I don't want to do. You give it a, things you need to do, you don't want to do either. So it's just like. <laughs> it's I guess just, that's more important. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the things you need to do, you don't want to do. Exactly. So it's just like, that's why I like always try to get the most out of my day mm-hmm. while you can. You know, it's like, while well, I'm still young also. So I mean, well, I always talk about that with my boy too, as far as like partying and raging and pulling these all nighters. Mm-hmm. Imagine being sober and then tr- dabbling in some shit when you were older. Like, you'd be such a lightweight. Yeah. Mad panic attack. <laughs> you would not know how to handle anything, dude. <laughs> like, you would be freaking yeah, you wouldn't know, yeah, the no, fuck no, out. No, <laughs> you wouldn't even be like, oh, this is not for me. Like, no experience of like, yeah. the outside world. No I did it. Like, it's good to party when you're young in the sense of hangovers, mm-hmm. for sure. Yeah, you get... Because yeah. there's something that happens when your frontal lobe develops in age like 25, 6, 7. <laughs> and those hangovers fucking smack yeah. you. They smack yeah. you in the fucking face. Yeah, man. And it takes away the fun because drinking's fun. I was just yeah. talking about that. My, like, I have like, a lot of friends who had to quit. They just like, can't handle it. Like, I'll never forget like the first time I ever had a hangover. I was 18 years 
18 years old in 2012. Well, that was alcohol poisoning. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you that. If, if you had a hang like a hangover Bro. at 18, that's alcohol poisoning. I mean, any any time you throw up from alcohol is technically alcohol poisoning. See, the thing is, I didn't throw up. I just felt like really like I felt like shit the next morning. Like I I just felt like my stomach had a stomach pain. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Like it was just very like. I don't know, bro. Like, you know Did you saying? eat? I, like, like, at the time... I when I party, I don't eat. Like, see, the night before, I ate and everything, alcohol, bro. alcoholic. Drink on an empty stomach Be- so you can get drunk faster. But it, it, <laughs> it, it, it was a crazy night altogether. Because I, I was on a Greek island over overseas in Europe. And um, mm-hmm. it was my first time going to a uh, club. They had this... Just drop club. that from Europe. I always forget that, dude. I always forget that you're Oh, yeah. Grew, yeah, that's where I grew up at. Most, most of my childhood, yeah. What's an American in a bathroom? What's an American in the bathroom? What is it? Why are they? Why are they not American in the bathroom? You said what is an American in the bathroom? Well, yeah. Why, why aren't are you American when you're in the bathroom? Why? Because European. What? <laughs> <laughs> what if you were sitting? Oh shit! <laughs> oh fuck! I don't know. Good one. <laughs> You fucked me over with that one. No, nah, but I was um, <laughs> like, I, what if I, you're I, a shit? I, I was born. I was born in America, though. I was. Oh, I, right, I, right. I was American born, but I grew up. I was raised over. There. I moved over there when I was thirteen. Coffee is so good right now. Oh, oh my god! god. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You were born where? I was born in Philadelphia. Oh, Philadelphia, yeah. Philadelphia Hospital would be exact, right next to the Children's Hospital down mm. in West Philadelphia. You were and, born um, in the Adult Hospital. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> And um, that would have been weird if I was born in Children's Hospital. But <laughs> I don't know anything about that world where where like specific things happen like that. I don't know where I was born. Really? I was somewhere in Jersey for sure, but I don't know where. You in the hospital? Mm-mm. Okay. I don't think it was Camden. Nope. Nobody don't ever told you? <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure they did. Oh, you I don't hold on that. to stuff like that. Yeah, Birthdays no. are not for me. I've never really cared for them. If I say happy birthday to one person, then I have to say happy birthday to everyone. Like, think about it. Yeah, what's wrong with that? That's a lot of work. You wish you... Everybody's birthday is like every other day. So it's like a lot, a lot of work remembering people's birthdays. I mean... I'm not like, saying, even uh, family members. Like, I don't know any of my family members. Yeah, yeah. And I'm not saying you got to write it down, but it's like, if you see it and bypass them, like, oh, it's this person's birthday. Like, I know their phone birthday. numbers. I guess you, that's... You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, but, like, just... Ain't nothing wrong with it. But if you forget, like, it's not... They can't hold it against you because you have a life of your own. Mm-hmm. You know? So, it's like... Yeah, it's just not good with remembering person. that. I just never did. Yeah, I got family members all over the world, man. Well, yeah, when did you go to Europe? Um, I want to say 2008 is when I moved over there. Mm. No, 2006. Oh, so you grew up a little bit in 2006, and I moved back here when I was in 2016. So I've been here t- 10 years when I was over there. Word. Yeah, 10 years. And then when I, when I came, then I, then I was going back and forth, like visiting for two weeks, like visiting family. Then that stopped happening when the uh, pandemic came. Because with the traveling restrictions and all that, that slowed down everything. Mm-hmm. But I'm going back this year, though, in March. Definitely going back this year to go see some family. Yeah, I've never gone over the any ocean like that. Why? I don't know. It's sketchy. What's got Bro, Planes listen, bug me man. out. Listen, man. A flight is safer than driving. Apparently, that's what they say. It, no, it's, it's the truth. Because you a got fact. people doing nitrous driving cars and shit. <laughs> <laughs> you know, people like, do fucking and, dust off and driving like, cars. There's no traffic in the sky. Not shout saying. Out, shout out. To nah. these people. Fucking yeah, no, not, not saying that, like, it's not like no accidents that ever happen on the plane. Like, I just don't think about stuff like that because the high ratio, if you look at the statistics of it. Yeah, what's the point of thinking about it? You know what I'm saying? Mm. So, but is it, like, if you, have you ever flown before? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so what? what I lived you, in Arizona. So what you worried about then? Uh, the plane. <laughs> <laughs> like, nah, man. The fucking like, plane going but, down, dude. But like, you, what's your experience with flying though? Like, what made you like put off on it? Like, nah, that ain't for me. Like Heights. I just don't fuck with heights. Like, did you get a window seat and you was like, nah? I I would prefer the window seat so I can see like <laughs> what we're crashing into. 
<laughs> That's like traumatizing. I need to know if we're landing on the ocean or the land <laughs> <laughs> or a building. I need to know. That's definitely true. Otherwise, I'm in the middle aisle or the center, just like I sleep like this. Like I'll pull the thing down and I'll sleep like I used to sleep in high school, mm-hmm. with like my elbows on the desk and do the whole, the whole way, like fall asleep and wake up. No man, like, stay I'm half pl- awake. That's kind of how it was for me this morning. I was like, oh, I just need to sleep another hour. But man, I'd be I would close my eyes and open my eyes, and it would be only ten minutes later. I'd be like, fuck. I was like counting down the time I had to wake up this morning. I can't tell you the last time I was like, really fully awake a whole flight. I can't tell you. I love sleeping. That's the thing. I, I will stay up all night for sure to make sure that when I get on the plane, I'm out. Like oh, I yeah. I do that I try, too. I get yeah. super That's really, stoned, yeah. so I try to fall asleep the second I'm sitting nah, in the seat. I, I stay up mad late, though. And then I sleep the mm-hmm. flight. And then, like, a lot of, like, I, and, uh, and I'm in the and airport. I don't, like, I don't really uh, get jet lag either. Ooh. Like, a lot of people experience jet lag, ooh. and I don't really experience that. I, I guess. Because while I sleep on the plane, jet so lag isn't real unless you apparently unless you're on like a long, long flight, like a really long one. But um, but yeah. So tonight we're going to spit. Fucking um, do you know all the words to this song yet? Most of them, yeah. Where we switched up some things. Yeah, so, so we did a session last night. Mm-hmm. For those who don't know, I don't say it enough. I'm an engineer. All the mm-hmm. music you guys hear of mine, I've I mix and he edit does, master. Repeat that. He don't everything. say it enough. Yeah, I don't. I don't. <laughs> I don't. Like, uh, yeah, guys, mm-hmm. we can do sessions wherever. Literally. So last night we did a session in the hotel, mm-hmm. but I forgot the headphones for him yeah. to record. But I'm so used to doing live performances and shit. I'm aware of that. Mm-hmm. So, and he's professional enough that he didn't need it to be loud, and he could bear with his own voice. Mm-hmm. And I think because of that, you were one taking the shit the whole time because oh. you were like, there was something about that underground yeah. way to do it. It made me feel sixteen again. And we'll bro. play it. We'll play a snippet of it in the middle of this podcast. But, but yeah, we layered it. We did all the shit and with no headphones in the corner of the door in Atlantic City. No and booth. This shit sounds no, no booth in no. the yeah. <laughs> No like, soundproof, just lights just, and just henny and blue and red lights. That's it. like that's all, and, and the it, vibe, and it sounds amazing. I really like that song. No, I appreciate that, bro. And I that's and, and it is different than your other shit too. Now that I think about it, I really appreciate that, and that's why, I like, even on the way up here, like how it all happened. <clears throat> when you you were talking about dropping the last podcast we did, yeah, and I was shout a, out Shiz, yeah, shout out SK man, mm-hmm. and um, he was like, well, yeah, um. You, I had seen that you was dropping a podcast, and I was like, that's crazy, because we was just talking about coming up to AC. So that's when I hit you up. I'm like, yo, that's what I was just talking about, like, mm. like coming up to AC just to get away. And I was like, yo, it's been this song I did was stuck in my head. You hear what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I, I had a melody, so I just started writing words now when I got down here, bro. That's why I didn't have Oh, it. that was today? Like, yesterday you made the song? Yes, bro. Oh, shit. On my way up here, I, I had the melody, but... And you didn't even know you were getting the room until... Not Nothing. Yeah, like he, I, I, I texted him bro. like, "Yo, I'm dropping the podcast tonight." He was like, "Dude, we're getting a room tonight," <laughs> and I live right next to Atlantic <laughs> City, so I was like, "Oh, fuck yeah. yeah!" And then that happened, and now you're gonna perform that song tonight. Yeah, bro, it's all like, and again, and we doing a podcast, like you said, it's all full circle, bro. Mm-hmm. Like how everything just happened, like the intimacy, like the not having the headphones. You know what I'm saying? This is like, why I do it. Gnarly shit like that. And even to the mistake of the line. You get what I'm what saying? What was the line like, that you said? The first, the line was supposed to go, um... I love poetry so I don't much. talk too much. You're going to have to read. You I did. said, my life is a book, no fantasies. But I end up saying, I don't talk too, I don't talk too much. You're going to have to read my book of life. My book of life. life. Yeah. No fantasies. And I was like, whoa. But like, that's man, way I mean, I made a mistake. more profound. Um, you hear it. Yeah. It like, it was, so it was like, so that's the thing about what you're saying. Certain sessions, mm-hmm. any other session by your request probably would have just done a new take. Yeah. They'd have like, you, know? you messed up. All right. No. Like, yeah. <laughs> and I was like, wait a second. We both paused and looked yeah. at each other. Like, and it was all recorded. Shout out Coco of all for documenting all mm-hmm. this shit. Fucking that moment's recorded. Mm-hmm. Like, holy shit, wait, what did you just say? Right. And we played it back and we were like, nah, we gotta keep that. And by the way, like every line I was like, all right, let's just make sure it sounds good. But mm-hmm. then I'm like, wait, it already sounds good, just do it. Mm-hmm. And that's first how first take it. Like you asked you could literally hear us talking about like mm-hmm. the just, first just, take. Just test it out. Like just yeah. like like just 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 run through it. Like you don't have the headphones. You can hear the uh beat. Mm-hmm. Like you literally hear it. 
Like, we talking about it. And like, that's the go. take. It and was just perfect. Yeah, and then we so just like, ran through the song. Like, you know how when you get situated in the studio, you want to, like, take some shots. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you just want to smoke. Yeah. We weren't even really situated yet. We were, like, trying to get to that point of yeah. being situated. Literally, what y'all hearing is the setup. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. And yeah. that's the song. That's what's beautiful about it, dude. I love shit like that. Yeah, that's tough. I love shit like that. And that's that's what it depends on, like... That's what I mean. Like you said, I don't say it enough. Mm-hmm. I, I do need to start doing more sessions with artists so mm-hmm. that I can like tap into the real Creep. poetic potential. Br- bring out the b- best of yeah, them, man. Yeah, because it is about that vibe and feeling good. And and obviously, like for example, like this song, we really like the rough take of it, mm-hmm. but there might be a moment where we want to do a vocal track yeah, of it it's exactly. or something just to do it on that mic yeah. to see the difference or whatever. Like We'll listen to it later tonight, for example. Mm-hmm. But... When it comes to sessions, that's why I started mixing myself because I know how much music I wanted to make. So mm-hmm. I was like, I got to learn how to do this. Yeah, because you know how much you want to pump mm-hmm. out. Yeah. And um, and if I want to be in the studio like that, then I need to be the one working in the studio. Yeah. And so that's, but then it turns out I'm, I'm, I'm a bedroom guy, man. I'm a house party guy. I'm a bedroom guy. Like, yeah. I don't, the studio is great for vibing. Yeah. And I like the studio to listen back to the shit. Mm-hmm. You know, to have like a listening session or a or a party or an event, more so. That's just me, you yeah. know. So that's why I enjoy when someone's like, "Yo, let's get a hotel room." There's something about that, about this space, about the mistake of the headphones, the mistake mm-hmm. of that lyric, the fact that you weren't in a booth and you yeah. were right next to me, yeah. and we were cheersing every couple, every ten minutes. Yeah. There was something about that moment. That makes the song way different than being in a studio and you only have Structure. an, an yeah. hour. Oh, hook you know? versus yeah, hook. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like so, was, yeah. Yeah, so like I said, it com- the, it, studio, it, the studio has its place. Mm-hmm. And um, and there will be records for sure that mm-hmm. I like only use the studio for. Uh, and, but, and, and, and I don't believe the studio is a building. The mm-hmm. studio is the people. Do you get yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, that's the thing. Like, because if you just put an equip- uh, uh, empty room. Good with equipment it, in there. and It's just yeah. an empty room with equipment. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? It's just like it's like it's it's not nothing being created. You know what I'm saying? You, you can't call it the studio. Yeah. The studio is the people. That's yeah. what makes it like the factory, like the actual thing that's working, making yeah. the merchandise. You exactly. Know? And having clientele is that and you get what I'm especially saying? in my position where I like I'm the host for stuff. It's, so it's like everybody works, you know. A lot mm-hmm. of artists record themselves yeah. until they want that record made, mm-hmm. you know. So sustaining it and making it a constant business style every single day because these people that I work with become friends and shit. And, you know, I understand that dynamic of business versus friends and, like, in art, it's not like that. Mm -hmm. I really only work, like, if somebody, anybody needs a studio session and I, like, I'll do it for them. Mm -hmm. But but I tend to only, like, happen to only work with motherfuckers that are like you, like, really good, you know? And it comes in, it comes in phases when... When I work with them because it's enjoyable, it's not work at that point. You mm-hmm. see what I mean? But um, but doing sessions is really enjoyable. I stopped. I slowed down on it the last couple of years because mm-hmm. of the pandy. Like I was working at a couple other studios. I have studios I can work out in Philly, and obviously situations like this can happen mm-hmm. whenever. But um, but I slowed down on that because it's it's so iffy, man. It's really iffy. Because you got to get a deposit to lock in the moment. Mm -hmm. Say on Tuesday, you're like, yo, Thursday, can we do this? And I'm like, yeah, can you drop me like half the session so we can, so I don't book anything else, you Mm -hmm. know? Otherwise, they're like, well, I got you that day. So then you're under the impression of the idea that, okay, this is happening. This is like my phone bill. Yeah, you know what I mean? You're planning around it, yeah. Yeah, And then it doesn't happen. Now it's like, hey, bro, I know we're friends, but like we can't do this. Broken promises. The agreement that we talked about has to happen Mm -hmm. because in my head, I'm thinking about this is how I'm surviving. And I slowed down on throwing events. And -hmm. that's like, okay, I'm, I'm, but I'm paying out artists, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's not crazy shit. It's just to pay. A couple bills, you know what I mean? Yeah. But if anybody deserves it, I mean, I think it's me because I'm doing everything. You know, yeah. I'm setting everything up, running the lights. If anything, I'm getting paid as a sound and light guy. Mm-hmm. I'm not even getting paid as, like, bugs. Yeah, no. You know, I'm getting paid said. as, like, the, the engineer and, like, setting. And you're not even turning profit around, which yeah, is crazy. Yeah, I'm not. I'm just, yeah. like, it's literally survival Can't, at that yeah. point. Like, the same thing I was telling you earlier. Like, when I charge, like, certain artists for features, they think... Mm-hmm. 
it's personal because they be like, oh, I heard you on this person. You gave this person the verse. I'm like, they just caught me at a certain time. It's about timing and it's you art. You what I'm saying? Yeah, that's what like, I mean. So that's what I mean. I'll, I'll do free it, collabs. Yeah, exactly. If like, we're in a session or, you know. Like, it, it, like, if you send me the song and you want me to do it on my own time, yeah, cool. I will do it when I do when I can do it. But if you telling me like you about to do a project or you want this song back by a certain time, yeah, 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 you, you gotta, gotta ha- cop the John. Yeah, you, you gotta you gotta pay for that because which you should they should be in the session too anyway. Exactly, you know? like you gotta pay for that because if you want me to get in the studio right then and now, like the engineer ain't free. You yeah, know what I'm saying. So I gotta come out of pocket for you. Yeah. So I and then you gotta think everything. Negative, you everything needs content too now. Mm-hmm. So like everything should be there. So. That's why I love Coco Evolve because I can work with them and bundle things together. It's like, okay, well, when you're working with Bugs, you're not just getting that. You're getting Coco Evolve as well, which is the recap if you want it, you know? Yeah. So, like, I'm cutting – but this is the thing. They always say in business, don't cut your your worth because then you're going to get the business that expects more with less. You know what I mean? Yeah. And there's something true to that. But then there's a the situation of I got a phone bill to pay. Mm-hmm. And if this person, all artists are, everything's expensive to do. That's what I'm saying. And I'm aware of that as an artist. That's why I do everything myself, because I'm aware of how expensive all of it is. So I be cutting my, I I do fucking 30% the price of fucking shit, like for sessions and shit like that. So like when, but when you boil it down, I'm getting a lot more work altogether because everything's content now. So as far as all that goes, it's, it works in itself, but at the end of the day, it's it's not really a sustainable thing unless we have like 24-7 people requesting, and that's what Spit needs to turn into mm-hmm. for me to be able to like move to the city straight up because right now it's we're bringing the clients there, and my clients are very spotty as far as let's record right now once a month type thing. You know, We need that. We need Spit on like Google more, like when people are look like – we need to find new artists that no one knows. And that's what the open mics are good for because we bring a lot of new people in. Mm-hmm. But I got to remind people, like, yo, the point of this is the studio, guys. Like, I mentioned it once or twice during the night. Like, we want plaques on the wall. We want records here. We want everybody to work. And I, and I like that you pointed that out on the last podcast, how you noticed everyone work together. Mm-hmm. Like, these new communities that meet every time, everyone winds up collabing. Yeah. That's different. Yeah. That doesn't happen in other scenes and like, shit. Like, literally, like, people got songs together. Like, even, um, like, Spit brought me and SK closer. You so, know like what you saying? said, it's a, it's about the people. It's so, we got, we, we're doing, we got that. Exactly. But now, business wise, say, like, I'm the owner and we need to pay the rent to do it. Yeah. We need clients, you know? Exactly. So, art is a business, but art is subjective. We got the workers. Yeah. We got, we got the merchandise. Yeah, we got we everything. We the clientele. Yeah, that's it. so that's you know why we're that's why we're doing it how we're doing it. You know what I mean? So other than that, everything is kind of freelance as far as like how engineering goes. But there, it can, it's going to be built into something special. Mm-hmm. You know, like they'll get another room when it starts getting busy, busy. You know what I mean? They'll get like Studio C because they already have Drowning Fish. That's the live room of Drowning Fish, mm-hmm. which is the rock one right next to it. But but I really like what we're doing there. Like and. But the point is, there's something about an underground show or an underground session that changes the song sometimes mm-hmm. that you don't expect. And the engineer that you work with... And I ain't gonna lie, that's wh- what I'm low-key worried about. What? How this song will sound live. Mm. It's gonna sound crazy. I'm the one setting up the live mix, dude. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> We're just that's gonna take the vocal out for the verse. We're gonna leave all the backgrounds. Mm-hmm. And the chorus will turn down so you can actually sing it. We'll run through it, too. Like, I have my setup. We'll actually run through it. Right, these are the mics yeah, we man. use. We use these mics at the open mics. Yeah, yeah. We won't like, yeah, we do. I should, like, spray paint them or something. I should spray paint them like a bright fucking, like, yellow or white. Yeah, white, dude. White mics? All white. Yeah. That would probably be dope. The white rice mic. But keep this part black color. Yeah, the top like will be panda. silver, probably. Pandas. Mm. I'm a spray painter. I would do that. So, um, so I guess I'll ask you some questions. I ask people this all the time. I'm just I got, curious. I got, I got a riddle for you, bro. What is it? Your opinion? You ready? Yeah. There's a farm mm-hmm. with 30 cows. Mm-hmm. 30 of them. 
and 28 chickens. Mm-hmm. How many didn't? How many didn't? How many didn't? There's a farm with 30 cows and 28 chickens. How many didn't? Two. Two what? I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. I'm not good with riddles, dude. I write, I'll write riddles. There's a farm with 30 cows mm-hmm. and 28 chickens. How many didn't? Oh, 10. <laughs> 28 chi- I thought you said chickens. 28 chickens. Oh, okay. That's weird. <laughs> <laughs> that made my brain feel <laughs> weird. That made my brain feel really weird. No, I had to get you back for that European. European. <laughs> that I was confusing to, for a second. Yeah. Cause you like the thing is about riddles, you always gonna look too deep into it. Mm-hmm. Like it's just twenty eight chickens. The answer be right in front of your face, but you just how many didn't? It's just funny because of how you phrased it. So it was like what? It wasn't confu- <laughs> computing in my head. All right, this is the question. This is the main question of all my podcasts. I've noticed. I um. I might bring another question back that I started off the podcast with. I just got to find an object. Mm-hmm. But um, first question out of two. If you could marry any cartoon character, who would it be? i never heard this before. There's a lot of them. <laughs> Don't be forgetting the one that you really want. <laughs> I'll tell you mine. Mine's the... The John from El Dorado. From what? From El Dorado, Road to El Dorado. Which is like, Julio, the hip, the hip. What is the, the John with the, El, the armadillo. The road, you never saw Road to El Dorado? Or Jasmine from Aladdin, obviously. I know Aladdin, Jasmine Fire. Mm-hmm. But I just watched Hunchback in Notre Dame. Esmeralda from that John is bad. Pocahontas bad, too. Ooh, Pocahontas, yeah. No, one, no one's called Pocahontas yet. Pocahontas, that she was definitely top of my list. I had to say Pocahontas. Pocahontas, that's like not that's a bad pick. definitely top of my list. That's not a bad pick. And my and my mother's Native American, so we yeah we both picked like Aztec Johns. Cause my <laughs> John my Johns from like Mayan shit, like Road to El Dorado is like the city of gold. Mm-hmm. And then yeah, I've never seen that though. Wow, well, you gotta watch that. You is that Disney? That. Mm-hmm, I think. Well, I wasn't sure. a big Disney guy. I love Lion King, though. Don't get it twisted. What were you watching? I was a heavy Nickelodeon Cartoon Network, bro. You could pick one of those characters. I could, but Pocahontas is bad. <laughs> but, but, but I could. Pocahontas is bad. But like, Pocahontas is the one. Man, I like. I don't see nobody on Cartoon Network or Nickelodeon looking better than Pocahontas. Not even on Disney. There's one in my brain, but I can't put a put like a character the name of the character to it. I can't. Who's your favorite cartoon character? Other than that, my favorite cartoon. Ca- I got a favorite cartoon. First guy I think about is Johnny Bravo. I loved Johnny Bravo. Johnny Bravo was hilarious. He was fucking awesome. <laughs> he said, oh. "Like, growing, like growing up, like yo, that's uh, like, so funny. Like my favorite cartoon character of all is out of two. Mm-hmm. It's out of two. Is he the Sheen from uh, Jimmy Neutron? Or, uh, is he the one with the black hair? Yeah, the, funny the goofy one. one yeah, Sheen. That's I my remember guy. the scene where he's like, "Look, mom, no hands." She <laughs> was my in guy. The shower. Is he the Sheen off of Jimmy Neutron, oh, or it has really? to be uh, Timmy Turner? Timmy Turner. Timmy wow, Turner. I love Timmy. Turner. Yeah, mine's hey, gotta be turn. mine's gotta be Johnny Bravo or Dexter from Dexter's Laboratory. Dexter was that boy too. Dude, Yo, they had a, they had a contest. Where you could like eat, like send them a letter and win to have your room transported into like a. I remember, I remember that. I, remember I that. wanted that. So I wrote I them a letter that. every fucking day. And I was like, that was back in the day, oh, bro. Dude, I Yo. guarantee you, my mom wasn't sending those letters. And that was early two thousands, bro. They were gonna like make a slide from like your room I to know downstairs. You, I remember you talking shit. about, dude. That's that would have been so awesome. I remember my scene in the uh, EB Toys magazine. They yeah, those magazines would get you as a kid. Remember them? EB, uh, EB uh, advertisements toys? are so evil. 
They're so fucking evil. Bro. They know what they're doing with like the colors and the shades. Yeah, especially when Toy Story came out. It was a wrap, bro. Yeah. That was a wrap, man. Yeah, like McDonald's, all of them got expensive. They used to give us mad, uh, like, to- remember the Pokemon toys? Yeah. With McDonald's, I have like the gold, the 24 karat gold ones. They used to have the Disney toys. Every time a movie came out, they had those. Like, mm-hmm. man, like, see. I feel sorry for kids today. And I sound like an old head saying that. Yeah, they don't get, like... like, like, like we were talking about VHSs creative, last yeah. night. We were talking about how those like, were dope to open. And like, we literally... Rewinding sucked, but... We literally had things that help us tap into our imagination. Daily, mm-hmm. we didn't even know it. You yeah. get what I'm saying? Like, that, that's what made but us, But then, like, when we were 12, internet. It was just like, there. Like, it we're just the middle, happened. Like, we're literally in the split of two. Gen- yeah. like, that's why I'm always Literally said, mixed. Like, when we turned 12, 13, that was m- it. That dude. was it. That was it, the peak. Instant messenger. Went, it went from dial-up to fucking touch screens in three years. Yeah, my, my space. Yeah. Like, you got to understand. Downloading In music. 2007, with the small razors and, like, the yeah. other phones where you could Blueberry, type shit. Your blueberries and all that. So At I that could. time, we were still thinking anything that would be touchscreen was just some James Bond shit. Yeah. And then, boom, next year, GPS's there was. GPSs had to be, like, plugged into the car. Yeah. They weren't on the phones. And they was thick as hell. Yeah. Like they, they, and they were wrong. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> every time. Yeah. <laughs> they were maybe, like, three streets yep. away. But then yep. I just remember, like, when the iPhone came out, dude... Like, yeah, and yeah. like that was that was the shift. And then iTunes, mm-hmm. then music because everything iTunes, was yeah. touchscreen. Yep, and it changed, and everything like completely changed. Yep. But us, us having no internet, like I'm talking about video games, even yeah, specifically, like, like, like not play, playing yeah. online. It for two PlayStation years. PlayStation One. Two years, you, you can't play, play online. You could play online, Dream but check. you couldn't because you like it was yeah, so yeah, fucking you hard. Know, you could to connect to any fucking yeah. thing. Yeah. Then the we next kids, we knew how to find no internet back then, Dude, man. Now you can't play those games unless they connect to online. Yeah. It's fucking wild. Like, yeah, not yeah. You they, can't like, even like, play that. Like Fortnite. You can't even play like, it. Like you can't even play it unless yeah. you're online. Like, which is crazy to me. Like before the standard was playing with your neck, like y'all it was your council. That's what's so slots. fucked. Yeah, because you're downloading the game too. So you're mm-hmm. you're paying sixty. You're not getting the hard copy that like nope. there's something about opening that plastic. It yeah. smelled a specific Having way. Having like the map and, and everything. When you crack it yeah. open and yeah, they give you something in there. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. It's like the happy meal. There's like, like, like there's nothing like there. I, told I do you. feel bad for the kids. Yeah. They don't get anything. And then you buy a sixty dollar game and then everything in the game costs money too. Yeah, bro. You would just buy the and, game and, 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 and they don't get nowhere near as the, uh, the, the nostalgia. Mm-hmm. Of the moment when that came out, that's like, what that, you know what it's just like going from dabs to smoking weed again. Like when I was smoking dabs for two years straight, and I went back to weed, I was like, "Holy shit! I forgot how fun cracking a blunt was." <laughs> yeah, and yeah. breaking the, the weed up, the and, process, and talking, every time yeah. you have different weed and you inspect it and look at it, why is it moving when I broke it up? Still, mm-hmm. like, like the weed, like you miss all that when you're smoking dabs. It's a different version. You're like, "Ooh, this dab, they smell good and they taste good," mm-hmm. but it's not the same as that. Just yeah, like the whole DVDs were yeah. the same as. VHS, yeah, like there was a something about the VHS, mm-hmm. but we, but even rewinding it, like that's how, like even like cartridges, the video games were cartridges. You get what I'm saying? But like, like e- e- even to see, like you ever seen that Netflix series to get down? Yeah, They're like how that first so season was one of the best seasons of a, of a show ever. You get what and I'm the saying? Second season liberalized the fuck yeah. out of it, and they ruined it. But, but the, the first season was one of the best. Like the thing the nostalgic is, nostalgic feel that they pulled off. Like the show, how hip hop was created was like literally. Just off of how music was made, like isn't that so record, fucked up? That happened because record. they took the music out, because they took the instrument classes out of school, which is why everybody in the seventies and sixties was amazing musicians, yeah. huge twelve piece bands. They took that out, so all the kids of those generations had mm-hmm. was the the players. Yeah. So someone was fucking scratching. They got yeah. two players. Mm-hmm. Th- did you get what I'm saying? And then the B-Boy and then everything. But, 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 all but, that came from but, them but, taking it out of schools. But but like, again, but think about like how like back when we were talking about technology wise, like say if they had an they iPad. Had the, they had, they made it their own. They had the DJ and they made it their own. You get what I'm saying? Like it had to come from a mistake. Like they scratching a record. Like, oh, that sounds good. We you do know have, what I'm saying? Yeah, like, we, we, it t- taps into your creativity. That's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. having less Depending is more. on what, yeah, yeah, yeah. Having exactly, less is more. Exactly how we recorded last night. It, Boom. Like yep. that's that's, that's it turned yep. into Full more circle. shit. Yeah, yeah, yep. yeah. Like that's that my point. I we do have to admit this. We are the children trolls original of the internet. Mm-hmm. We are why it's toxic. <laughs> Our generation 
is why it's toxic. We the founding fathers. It's not the younger the, kids. Yeah, the they learn fa- from us. We like, the founding fathers of them. Yeah, but 60% of the internet is bots for sure. It like got bad. 60% of it is, it, no, it's like proven that 60% of shit, like these streamers who say they have 100,000 people watching them live, no, they fucking don't. No, they dude. don't. No, they don't. They're all bots. And like people using the internet, like mm-hmm. literally people that comment. And they shit, do that like, with streams too. That's why it's weird with algorithms. Yeah, and like just when Justin Bieber drops a tweet like, yo, put my songs on mute and play them all night. Yeah. When someone like that says something like yeah, that. Yeah, in 2020 he said that. I that's how that. you know. When Nicki Minaj is lumping her ticket sales with her album sales. Yeah. That's how you know. Pat, they, what is it? They're uh, the bundles. biggest artists and they're telling y'all to scan, spam. Get bundles. Yeah, get bundles. Yeah, like, buy dude, it. No. And I actually Buy this that. t-shirt and it will go towards the album I had two iPads and I... Had two different Spotify accounts, and I just played my shit. I made a playlist and like looped it and looped it. And if it stopped and went to something else, I'll go back to my page and play it. And my plays on my distro kid did go up a lot, and it made me some money. So these farms, these stream farms, they're real. So like when you, if you have a computer, two people in your house that have an iPad, your phone, the other people's phones, if you can convince. That those eight people to play your Spotify on mute all day and night, like when you're not using your phone, just go back to Spotify like it's a habit and just play your shit the whole time. After one fucking week, dude, you'll rack up like 20,000 views at least. And that turns into real money. 20,000, you'll get like 10 bucks, you know, five bucks, yeah. 10 bucks, you know. But if you're doing that, then it does put it in an algorithm and it does all the other shit. And this is what Bieber does. Yeah. <clears throat> Which We're talking about someone who doesn't need Selena the fucking. Selena Gomez did it too. They all do. Yeah, they. That's what's too. gross to me. That's why I just focus on the art. Like, and I'm like, something will hit when it hits. It's, I'm just well, adding. Well, well, I'm just adding. Said that because Justin Bieber don't even have it. He doesn't he's have talented to do it, bro. enough. He's Neither talented. does Nicki. All that you know, yeah, but talented, maybe they bro. do have to do it. Who knows? Maybe it nah, is a show. Man, Justin like, Bieber doesn't. Yeah, Justin Bieber doesn't. He's, he's locked in, bro. Yeah. Like with the culture, like to- mm-hmm. talent wise, you know. But like, that's why I'm just keep painting instead of focusing on one painting and like that's the painting. Everybody listen, go look at this painting. I just keep painting. And when one gets big, they're gonna be I'll I'm gonna have so many other paintings for people to look at. Mm-hmm. Like this is the forty fourth podcast or forty three. 43 podcasts. That's 45, 50 hours of me speaking, just yeah. talking. And, 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 and then I have 50 plus live performances. <clears throat> That's like, I have a lot of catalog. That was my point about it. I want there to be full story of documentary type shit, which is happening. I have a documentary coming in 2030. All this is connected into it. That's why I've been being followed by Coco since 2019, right before the, like during the pandemic. The riots. I even have that. Like everything that has happened is like in my documentary. You documented as as twenty twenty. Oh man, that was a crazy. Since twenty nineteen, so it's going to be the last ten years. Yeah. And my vision of it actually is going to turn into like a reality show, like where there will be actors, but there won't be because it'll still be live action to what we're doing now. So it'll turn from a docu series into a reality, but it's not rea- It's not like a fake reality show. Like it's a vlog type thing. Not going to stream. But it's gonna keep up. I have to. I'm gonna wrap this big old bundle up, and I'm gonna sell it to one of the fucking John's Netflix or something, and I'm gonna try to get it like that. 2030, the buggy documentary. That's the one. Okay. Because this includes everything. This is actually the first time I'm saying it. So whoever listens through to this podcast will know what my plan is. Mm-hmm. But um, but yeah, that my idea is character arcs like with you and who I meet along the way. So Carney, whatever happens to Carney. I have the origins of it, mm-hmm. and his character arc will be like a whole episode. You think? See what I mean about mm-hmm. a Netflix series? Cal Black will be a whole other thing. Yeah, it's, your, uh, sto- uh, your story, like I'm talking about the story before they met mm-hmm. y'all met me. Yeah, and then that's the season. Every episode of season one is ev- the main characters. Every mm-hmm. episode is their story. First episode of a season two, how we all linked, mm-hmm. where we all met, and then season three. This is the documentary. Where we all went, mm-hmm. got to by 2030, season four, now it's where we're at. Yeah, where we are, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, dope. that's my vision of it. So, like, people like you, people like them, that's like, like, we're going to do a sit-down interview, you know? Like, I can't, like, dude, this is what's crazy about meeting certain people like Coco. Like, people who just, 
see your vision and they want to be a part of it. They got the time, you know, and that's where the dedication and loyalty is coming from. So this is a podcast, but when we get to that point, probably in a, a couple years, we'll sit you down and ask you specific questions, poetically lit, so that you can respond like, well, this is what happened, this is where I was, this is where I am, you know, narration type shit. Mm -hmm. Like, and then the B-roll will be everything that's happening. So the shit's already here. Life is the thing. That's what I mean. The, the studio isn't the studio. It's the people in the studio. Mm -hmm. It's the record you're making when you're in there. It's what you're painting. So people think that, like, I'm just recording a video or I'm just doing a podcast. Like, this is all narration as well. Like, this is going to be used in a clip, I'm sure. Like, because this is the first time I'm, I'm announcing it. So, like, like in the documentary, refer to Bugs, Full Circle Podcast, episode 44, mm -hmm. this timestamp. This is the moment when it happened, when we were in AC, you know, like, you know, all these things are... That's why it's important to document them. Yeah, so and the, the point is not to be the center of attention or some big star. It's just, I'm just painting. I'm just painting life. And if if people grasp my idea and they want to invest in it, that's the goal. Like, loan me this so it can be that, because it already is here character development, the, the real people, real stories, because everything's very weird with social media, and, like, I'm going against the grain of beef and, like, stripping and shit. Mm -hmm. Like, there's stripper rappers or you're beefing with everybody. And that's the way, like, you get attention, and it's like a crabs in a bucket. I don't want to do that, dude. I just want to be a worm going through the fucking dirt, bro. Mm -hmm. Like, I just want to come up, see a tree, come up, see a beach, come up, see a fucking... Other than that, I'm in my hole. Mm -hmm. So, documenting all your guys' shit is, like, Low key, what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. You guys just don't know that. Now you do. <laughs> but yeah, I'm documenting all this shit. It's deeper than the music, cause life is art. Yeah, cause I've seen. Uh, even when we first met, we got the uh, video with everybody in the studio, mm -hmm. like running, and it was from the whole day, like from the the whole day. Yeah, from the whole day. It's all like, about the moments. Like, like when like you stepped on that mouse trap, <laughs> even though that was <laughs> on my phone, that was one of the funniest yeah. fucking moments. You gotta like you. I get it, live the moments, of, but you've yeah. got to be ready with your camera all times, dude, because yeah. these are moments that are like... Can't buy. Yeah, hilarious. So to be able to capture it without them knowing that the camera's recording and then yeah. like hopping in on those moments, those are like... Yeah, when people say the camera, they go, oh, now it's time to act. Yeah, they, sw <laughs> they switch up. Just like the podcast. <laughs> it, I mean, I, I heard act. Shiz do it, actually. I'm going to call him out. In the, in the podcast we did, when he, I was like, who are you? He's like... Yo, I'm shit. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, you don't <laughs> stop talking like that, motherfucker. Yeah, bro. Cool like, as hell. <laughs> like, you're going to eventually break. We're two gonna two minutes wait. later, yeah. he broke. <laughs> two minutes later. All right, we're going to be up. We got, we got, we're going to be up here for a long yeah, like, time, I'm about bro. to talk about ramen noodles, and like, you, your time be serious. <laughs> like, I ain't about to sit here and put no act on, man. Yeah. I can't. I can't. Two hours straight? When the camera comes on, people... It changes because the lights you get hot. You feel like those hot flashes happen. You mm. you overthink what you're saying. I ain't gonna lie to you, bro. I feel like I've been on camera all my life, though. You know what I'm saying? We have like, actually. Like we te have. technically, yeah. But my like who my father is and what he does, like he mm -hmm. he's a, he's big in music, you know. So word. What's he do? He, he's a songwriter. He's a singer. But right now he's a pastor. He has his own church now. Reverend. You know yeah. But um. Which is very uh, successful right now, and uh, he moved out of that life of the industry and everything. But did he talk to you about it ever? Oh man, I told you he got. He told me with the Eddie Murphy oh, house, yeah, all yeah, types yeah, of stuff, yeah, man. You said that. Yeah, I got some stories, but my dad like, but he yeah he would help write for, like, for Boys and Men, Chris Brown. Uh, he worked with Ellie Reed. That's epic. Uh, Brian McKnight, Luther Vandross. Epic you as know fun. what I'm saying? Like he's '90s, like Babyface. He he auditioned to be part of New Edition when Bobby Brown left the group. That's epic as fuck. You get what I'm saying? And uh, literally, like, Dustin, you ever seen the movie Blade with Wesley Snipes? That used to be my favorite movie when I was a kid. That's how I tripped mine too. That's crazy. You said that, but like the little, <laughs> what you do? but I was trying to be Blade. I was using like a toy golf, <laughs> like a toy little, little golf club, and I slipped on a rug and hit my face on a glass table. Damn. Yeah, bro, trying to be Blade. I was pissed. I had a raincoat on think, thinking it was the... That shit is so good. Work. That's but, such a good fucking... They had a great soundtrack for that. Yeah, man. Wesley Snipes, man. Wow. Taxes, dude. Yeah. Let's talk about taxes for a sec. Isn't that why we came to America? To get away from taxes. 
to no, they they just didn't want to pay them. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. To yeah, avoid yeah. taxes, yeah. they didn't avoid taxes. They just and now we got everything is fucking. They just taxed. wanted to be greedy. Everything they, is taxed. Bro. Like I believe, like one, like because Americans are paying tax to the English. So they I don't want to talk about that. I'm sorry. I don't know why I brought that up. <laughs> it yeah. makes me mad. Yeah. It makes me so mad. Yeah, because that's what happened. Because even no, like if I cash app you. 20 at the end of the year that's it like or if i just give you a 700 hundred dollar gift that's taxed yeah that's bullshit every transaction is taxed and then taxes are taken out of that so like do you know and then why? all this money's going to other countries dude but and then we're paying seven dollars for milk it's because america's in debt bro no it's not we could do dude how about we're the fucking power you don't think america's not in debt? We're, we have the power this is how much a dollar's worth. A dollar. All of y'all can eat shit. If you want to eat shit, you can. Everything that's a dollar is worth a dollar, which means that we can bring it back down and we demand. A dollar shouldn't be worth 25 cents. Because I'm saying, like, at the end of the day, it's about power. It's some Viking shit. Who's holding the missiles? Who has the power? It's America, right? That way do is right. That- it, sh- yeah. it is not not what's going on, but with because Russia of the China corruption right with who's getting money from where, they're all getting money at the top, and they obviously don't care about down here. And inflation is just eating itself. But if we uh, if we literally made inflation illegal, made the minimum wage like twenty five an hour, no matter what the job is, and, and inflation's illegal, which we I don't think things will deflate. That's what I was saying last night. I don't think. Milk's going to get cheaper, but if we were able to make milk like three bucks again at least, instead of seven, like three or two bucks, then the prices can go to, it could be 20 an hour instead of 25. You see what I'm saying? But if prices are staying here, 25 an hour needs to be the minimum. And if that's the case, specialty things would have to go up. Like a studio session would now be $75, not 60 an hour. You know what I mean? Like shit like that would go up, not milk. And stuff, and then at the same time, we shouldn't even bro, be paying for electricity bro, and shit. A, a, a haircut is forty dollars now, bro. Yeah, it's insane. I remember a hair. I remember a hair, hair haircut being the twenty dollars was a lot. Yeah, that's. You feel me? I'm like, yo, if you had a twenty dollar cut, you, like, you had a lot that of hair. Boy, like, Why you think I grew my shit? <laughs> bro, I'm not crazy. trying to get my haircut every fucking week, dude. I remember like, like, I, like, cause I had them twenty dollar barbers. I couldn't go to them all the time, but when I went to them twenty dollar barbers, barbers when I was a young boy, they. Used Hook me up, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Now, if you go to a barber for twenty dollars, bro, you're fucked. Yeah, it's crazy. So, like, like even like, what, bro, everything, like, everything went up two hundred percent, two hundred fifty percent, and think then you got to think about housing. People can't do that. Housing needs to be like. There's no way a fucking one bedroom studio, like a house like this, essentially like a hotel room with a bathroom and the kitchen's just in the same room. That should not legally be be more than eight hundred dollars, bro. Like straight you'll up, you'll be lucky if you find it for twelve. For landlords to charge that much, you'll and be then, lucky if you find it for twelve, bro. That's what I'm saying. Which like, is crazy. That's not worth it. Nothing. None of that is worth it. So you have a generation of people who can't buy cribs because of the other generations holding on to them. Then the corporations like BlackRock buying neighborhoods and then renting them out overpriced. That no one's making the money that they should at the jobs and means to survive. McDonald's is twenty dollars. Fuck it, man. I just want to rap. Let's go to spit. <laughs> that's that's yeah. and we're just watching UFC fights and baseball yeah. and there's gonna there's gotta be a moment where we're like, yo, we gotta say something. We we can't do this shit. Like literally, we fucking can't. Nobody has money for a rainy day. Cause you, bro. People don't have hope. People don't have faith. People think that like it's not well. It's nothing I can do. Mm-hmm. That that's their mindset, and yeah, and that's where I, and I don't want my page to be political. I want to keep it's not arts. political. I want to keep it artsy, but yeah. I might like I might have to like start saying some shit like, "Yo, guys, like, bro, that, we gotta do something." To, like, bro, are you guys I, cool with how much you're getting paid? Are you guys cool with this? Like, I literally no one's cool with this, bro. I literally just said it in the song that we did yesterday, bro. Mm-hmm. I said like they they mad that I speak on reality. Mm-hmm. I said so. Go ahead and cancel me. You get what I'm saying? Like, yeah. it, it's it's not. There's nothing wrong with saying what's wrong was was pointing it out. You get what I'm yeah. saying? Like I'm not saying you should live like this. You should do that. No, I'm telling you what's yeah. going on around you. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? I don't care how you live your life. Mm-hmm. You feel me? So I'm not trying to be judgmental or political. But like there has like 
You know what I'm I, saying? Like, I don't like the idea of protesting because protesting is very weird. But like we all, have to, make, we all have to make a stand somehow. Always don't open new doors without bro. without like me social media shadow banning the post that you do to let everybody know that this is the day that we're not gonna do <laughs> shit. You know, like whatever kind of protest happens, like all these big companies are laying people off too. They're talking about it's it's the best time for jobs and shit. No, it's not, no, it's dude. Not. You got like. I see people telling stories of applying to a thousand jobs, like on LinkedIn and Indeed. <laughs> Hundreds of jobs they're applying to, and they go through the interview process, Indeed and then don't nothing work. happens. Huh? Indeed, don't work no more. No, nothing does, dude. <laughs> nothing works. That's so, true. like, your only option is to work for like other Indeed than that to work, is though. to. Do Indeed. construction, which is fucking weird, which no one wants to do, so f- that's not an option. Be in a work in a restaurant or nightlife situation in Atlantic City, mm-hmm. which sucks too, because you're if you're in a situation where you're an artist, otherwise your social network changes if you're seen working somewhere because people talk shit. Like if I was seen working at McDonald's dog, could you imagine? Could you imagine the judgment that would happen there? Yeah. You- Even if I owned it. Even if I owned the McDonald's the, the, and I was seen in there with some McDonald's shit, the, cra- the crazy thing is they the would person. assume that like you know what I'm saying. And the person laughing at you, you making more than them. Yeah, it's crazy. So it's, so just, it's just the image of it. Yeah, th- that's what I'm saying. There's yeah, a whole image that goes behind yeah. it. So if that's the case, if you're an artist, a struggling artist, but you need to work to pay for shit, yeah. But the job you get can't be public. But you're, I'm a social guy, for example. So you're, you're if I get, a, if I got a job, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Off of judgment of people, yeah, because the economy you. is fucked up, it's very weird. So that's like a social thing that I've, I've, that, I've that, had, I've been dealing with that, that for ten that, years. That, that that means people are in it for the wrong reasons, bro. That means clout is a drug. Yeah. Because like, there's no way people are choosing what people think of me over stability. Like, yeah. like that, that, that doesn't even make sense to me. You but no, like, yeah, like th- it started from the gem. Like, none of the jobs are even worth it. First of all, yeah. <laughs> like, none of them are paying enough. Yeah, to, but to it, even do that, you know. So then you got then you look at the social aspect. Like, this is not worth it here. It's not worth it here, and it's not worth it here. Why would I want to do any of that shit? Let alone, like, dude, like I said, goes now it ties into where you live. Okay, we would need five roommates to have a house. Other than that, you're living in a place connected to other houses, which is always I always bug out about that, like a neighbor leaving a candle lit or something, mm-hmm. and everything burning down because the houses are connected in mm-hmm. apartments. We should not be fucking living on top of each other like this. We're humans, dude. Mm-hmm. We need to walk around. Yeah. We need some fucking grass. We need some a sand. Backyard. <laughs> we need some trees or something. We should not be living on top of each other to the point where like. Turn that music yeah, down. You can barely think. What yeah. the fuck, bro? I'm alive because of the music. If mm. this music doesn't play, I'm going to die straight <laughs> up. Like, so if you yeah. call the cops and say that they're too loud, no, this is what keeps me alive. Like last night when mm-hmm. we were bumping shit at like 3 a.m., we're in yeah. a fucking hotel room and the phone rang, but it was funny when you answered it, no one talked yeah. because they already know. The people at the front desk already know. <laughs> like, they're not going to turn that shit down. Yeah. But. Yeah, I made a point like so, yo, you're not buying a room in Atlantic City <laughs> on Thursday in February and, and expecting silence, bro. <laughs> like, we are raging tonight. There's heroin bags right there outside. <laughs> like we're fucking raging. This is the place that you come. Literally, it's baby Vegas. Yeah. <laughs> but but we're making art. We're not out here fucking around. Yeah, facts. We're we're painting the fact of like the pain of soon, life. Soon, we're soon, painting about as soon as I got here, we went to work. Yeah, and we're we're painting about these things we're talking about. Like, we make it feel good through music and vibes, but... I haven't even left the hotel room yet. (laughs) You didn't walk outside yet? Just I've been here, bro. Oh, no, we did the little promo. That's the furthest I've been, yeah. Mm -hmm. I didn't walk outside yet. Tonight's going to be fun, dude. Yeah, man. Fucking, um... I got to take a piss real quick. We'll be, uh, that coffee. We'll be right back. I'm going to play that snippet of the song we just made. Yeah. It's time to go up I'm moving low key to chase my dreams They thought I froze up It's always a target on your back when you the chosen I hear what they had to say But trust me, they don't know us Keep pushing forward Oh, I gotta make a prop I miss my grandma, daddy Do anything to see a smile Oh, never leave it, need it now I made my sacrifices I'm deserving out of crime
Actually, never mind. We just realized that we got a dip because it's time to hit the Philly. We're going to do the open mic. But thank you for coming through, brother. Work never stops, man. <laughs> Great conversation. I'll have you back on this bitch. Yeah, definitely, man. We locked in. Expect more from me and Bugs coming soon. We wanted to show y'all a little preview of the song, but more to come with that. Just stay tuned. Stay tuned. See you guys. Have a good night.